Hello, everyone, and welcome. Welcome, welcome. This is our Seesaw for Schools Back to School webinar with Clever and ClassLink. I am so excited to be here with you today. Um, I would love to see who we have in the room with us today. So um, if you can open up that chat, this, is, this will be our primary communication method. And next to where it says two, when you initially um, open it up, it'll say panelist. Hit that little drop down arrow, change it to panelist and attendee so everyone can see your comments and drop in who um, I have with me on um, where are you from, what district, and what your role is. We'll give everybody just about 30 more seconds to come on in before we officially jump in. So there should be next to two. Um, you should see a little arrow next to where it says panelists and attendees. If you click that little arrow, then you should be able to select everyone. Oh, no arrow? Oh, no, I don't know what's going in on here. Let's see. All right, how about now? I just changed the setting. All right, great. <laughs> All right, everyone, let's see who I have. Hi, Taylor, hello, Carol. Hi, Tracy, welcome, welcome. Hi, Jeff, welcome. All right, so glad to have you. Glad I got that straightened out. Um, so welcome, welcome. So this is our back to school, um, Seesaw for Schools um, back to school webinar with Clever and Class Link. Um, just to make sure that everyone is in the right place. This webinar is for um, administrators that will be um, rostering and setting up their classes using Clever and Class Link. You have used Clever and Class Link to roster last year and you plan on using it again for the new school year. So um, if that is you, you are definitely in the right place. I am Mia. I am the training and professional development specialist here uh, at Seesaw. I have been with Seesaw since October of 2020. I am a former kindergarten teacher. I am excited to be here with you today. I have um, two of my amazing colleagues who I'm going to have unmute and introduce themselves. Mitchell, I'm gonna throw it over to you. Thank you. Uh, I am Mitchell. I'm a customer support specialist. I've been with Seesaw for just about a year and I also mm -hmm. was a kindergarten teacher. Yay, team kindergarten. All right, Taza. Hey everyone, uh, my name is Taza. I am an implementation consultant here at Seesaw. I've been here for a little over a year and my role here is just to make sure that uh, we are meeting your rostering needs. Yes. So Mitchell and Taza will be manning the back channel. So that means that they will be um, in the chat, answering your question, dropping in resources. So we do have a, that chat feature. Just make sure if you, just, you are just joining us next to two, you hit that little arrow and change it to panelist and attendee. So everyone can see your questions and your comments. There is also a formal Q and A if you would like to put your questions in the Q and A. Um, we will be manning that as well. This session is being recorded. You will receive a link to this recording in about 24 hours. Just give us 24 hours um, in that um, email that you will receive will be the link to the recording, which does last for 30 days. So if you want to keep it, make sure you click it and download it. You'll also have the slides from today for you to review. And then we'll also have um, a certificate of completion. All right, so I think all of the housekeeping things are out of the way. So let's go ahead and get started. As a reminder, this session is for administrators who use Clever and ClassLink to roster their classes last year and plan to roster with Clever or ClassLink again for this back to school year. If that is you, you are in the right place. All right. Um, just one thing um, that we do want to point out, if you will be making any changes to the number of student licenses or schools that are syncing, please let us know. All right, so let's take a look at our agenda for today. So first, we are going to jump into um, how to resume your nightly sync. After that, we are going to talk about syncing all schools. Then we're gonna jump into how to, uh, some troubleshooting tips. 
Um, after that, we will talk about data cleanup. And then finally, I will share some training resources with you. All right, as we get started, I want to just share some common um, Q and A's. So the first question is, what will happen to old classes when we sync with class link or clever? So the class link um, slash clever sync will not affect any classes created by your teachers. Those older classes that will not be used in um, the new year should be archived by administrators. Last year's Clever or ClassLink classes will be automatically archived when the new school year data is synced with Seesaw. All right, the next question. We used Clever or ClassLink last year. Can I keep my old sharing rules? You absolutely can. There is no need to set up any new sharing rules every year unless your Seesaw for School subscription actually changes to add more schools, grade levels, or subject areas. So if your subscription um, hasn't changed, um, you can keep it the same. If your uh, subscription has changed, you can edit your sharing rules to include additional sections or schools. All right, first thing that you need to do um, is to make sure that you are signed into your admin account, your Seesaw for Schools administrative account. Um, so you can access uh, your roster sync dashboard from your district admin dashboard. In order to run a sync, you need to be a district administrator. So when you go to web.seesaw.me and choose to log in, you'll see at the very bottom, it'll say, um, I'm a Seesaw for Schools Administrator. You will click that to log into your dashboard. All right, so now that you are signed in, you are ready to go. The first step that is to resume your nightly sync. So most schools had their nightly sync paused. So we need to go in and make sure that we resume that. So you're going to need to resume your nightly sync first. And then second, you're going to need to initiate uh, your full sync, which we'll talk about in a second. But if you just hit full sync, the full sync button, um, it will do a full sync and then it will be paused. So you must do both um, in order to ensure that you are set up and ready to go correctly. All right, so first step, as I mentioned, is to resume that nightly sync. So from Clever or Class Link, you're going to click Manage Roster Sync. You see that um, that is that top box that is highlighted in orange. And then after that, you are going to tap Resume Nightly Sync. It's that simple. All right, after that, you're going to sync all schools. So after you resume that nightly sync, you're gonna initiate a full sync to create uh, your classes within Seesaw. And we do have um, just some resources that we're going to drop into the chat um, to share with you on how to do that. But let me walk you through that right now. All right, so we've already resumed our nightly sync. So after that, we are going to sync all schools by um, from that manage roster sync. This time we're gonna tap sync all schools, like you see here, that button that is highlighted on the right. And that's gonna initiate a full sync, which will bring um, all of your new classes into Seesaw and it will archive last year's classes. When you initiate that full sync, um, that is when all of the previous class, Clever Class Link created classes are archived. Um, if you, there are manually created classes that were created outside of Clever or Class Link, then you will need to do a, a manual archive and we will drop a link into the chat um, on how to do that. All right, so let's talk about some troubleshooting. All 
All right, so here are um, some troubleshooting tips that we have for you. So make sure that you only share grade levels that you have purchased for. Um, contact the person at your school or district who purchased the seesaw just to confirm those numbers to make sure that um, you are sharing for the appropriate um, grade levels. Also, as a reminder, Seesaw supports 150 students and 20 teachers per class. Um, update the sharing rules to fit within these limits. Uh, grade level, um, just so you know, is not a requirement in Clever or ClassLink. If you don't include a grade level, classes will sync as a grade level other in Seesaw. So just something to note. And also the first time that you sync, it is recommended that Seesaw look over um, the shared data to catch any potential issues. So when you are ready to sync, make sure that you reach out to Seesaw support um, to let them know. So if one of your schools is paused, you can resume that nightly sync by um, next to that school name, you're going to tap the three dots and then you're going to select resume nightly sync like you see here on my screen. For schools that have a hold, you'll need to resolve any errors and rerun your sync for that school. So to view errors, you are going to um, click view errors. So that's this gray button right here um, that I'm pointing to on my screen. So you're going to click that view errors button and you'll be taken to um, your error description page. You can also download all of the errors for your school at one time by again, tapping those, tapping that view error button, tapping the three dots and then selecting download errors CSV. We recommend that you get in the habit of checking your roster sync dashboard to see how your sync is doing. The error description page gives you a more depth view of the errors that occurred at the school site. So um, this column error here, that indicates the name of the error that has occurred. So you can see here, the first error is student is missing from shared data. Um, the count indicates how many times this error has occurred. So that student is missing from shared data error has occurred twice. That impact column indicates the outcome of the error and what effect it had on the school. Uh, school. So um, because of that, the student is not updated. And then the resolution indicates exactly how to fix that error that occurred. Under error data, so that's that very last column that you see on the right, um, you can click that blue download icon to download a CSV of all of those errors. So most of your sync errors can be resolved from your admin account in Seesaw or in Clever or ClassLink. So first, um, make those changes required to your data in Clever um, or ClassLink or your Seesaw dashboard per um, those instructions that are included under the resolution column. Um, most of the er errors will require a resync after you have made the required changes to your data. You can resync by tapping that rerun sync from the view error screen. And I'll just go back to that previous slide. You can see here that is that blue button at the very bottom on the lower left. So um, you would just tap that rerun sync from this view um, under the managed uh, roster sync or you can tap manage roster sync and click the three dots next to the school. So I'm gonna just go back one, click that three dots under the school and then you would click run manual sync. All right. And we do have a video um, to help you with any troubleshooting error errors. As I mentioned at the beginning of this session, you will receive uh, these slides so that video Welcome. will be included. Let's explore trouble.
and you can watch that at your leisure. All right, so the next step is data cleanup. So let's go ahead and jump into that. So if you don't um, need your teachers or your students to access historical portfolios, then you are able to skip this step. Um, see, as you saw, we use the student IDs to keep student portfolios from different classes and years together. So if you're rostering with Clever, the student ID is pulled from the uh, SIS ID field in Clever. If you are rostering with class link, the student IDs is pulled from the source ID field, field in class link. So you might have um, students that uh, have started off with the free version of Seesaw. These students do not have student IDs. Some of these students may also have multiple journals because they may have used Seesaw in multiple classes. So you'll need to make sure that you assign the students a student ID and you merge those du duplicate journals um, if you want your students to have access to that historical data in one cohesive journal. So you are going to go um, from your overview tab in your admin dashboard, you're going to go under admin tools and you're going to select that missing student IDs. And then here, this is where you're going to, um, when you're adding IDs um, for your students, this is where you can add those here. Um, You'll see if a student is missing a student ID, it says um, ID in use, um, or if there is a duplicate, I'm sorry. So when you're adding your IDs for students, there'll be an option to merge um, any IDs that are duplicated. So you can just click that, click here to merge um, student IDs, and then you're gonna follow the steps to merge those student journals into one account. And I will actually jump into my administrator dashboard and go back over how to do that in one second. So when a teacher with an existing Seesaw account is added to a dashboard for the very first time, um, they are, um, there are imports with any existing uh, classes and student accounts. So if a teacher created a class in 2018, when they are added to a dashboard for the first time, they will be imported with the, the existing data. In order to have accurate analytics and billings, it's important to take the time to clean up your data. So to do so for each school dashboard under your admin tools, you're going to tap archive all classes, then you're going to select um, a date to archive any classes created before that date. So since you are syncing with Clever or Class Link, we recommend selecting a date uh, the day before you initiated your sync. It is important to bulk archive classes before you archive students because you can only archive students if they are not enrolled in an active class. So um, I'm going to just jump over here. Here I am in my admin dashboard. Somebody was saying that they aren't seeing. So um, we're here in the admin dashboard here. Um, so in order to clean up that data, you're going to look first for students with those, um, make sure that they all have those IDs. Underneath the admin tab, I am in that overview tab here, admin tools, assign missing IDs there. And then here, this will show you any students that have missing IDs or any students that have those duplicates. You can enter in their IDs from that screen and archive those classes. I'm going to go back here. So, um, once you have archived classes from the previous school uh, year, then you're going to archive um, student accounts. So here is that archive student account links here. And then you're gonna tap um, archive old students.
And me, I'm sorry to interrupt. Can I make one comment? Yes, please do. Yeah, so this right here is the school dashboard. Yes. So if you all are not seeing the uh, admin dashboard, this is one of the schools that you will have to click and get in. And that's how you would access this admin tools on the side from a school dashboard. Thank you for clarifying that. You're welcome. All right. Yes, thank you for clarifying. All right. Okay, so we talked about bulk archiving. So next, so after you go ahead and so when you bulk archive, just as a reminder, um, under the admin tools, you're gonna tap archive old class and you're gonna select that date. And as I mentioned, that date should be before um, you initiated your sync. Once you have archived classes from the previous school year, then you can archive old students um, in bulk. So you're going to do that um, by um, underneath your admin tools, you're gonna select uh, archive old student, account. you're gonna select archive student accounts um, to continue. Um, just one thing I wanna point out that no data will be deleted without your permission. Archive students will still be on your dashboard, but they will not be taking up any licenses. So I know um, that those were a lot of steps. We do have a resource for you, a website um, with all of these steps uh, listed out for you. So you can find that here at our technical steps for administrators. We will drop this link into the chat. We recommend that you bookmark um, this and there you will find all of the steps that um, I have just gone through. I do have a couple of the additional resources I'm gonna share and then we're gonna open it up for some more questions. All right, so here are some additional resources that um, you can share, you, you can use as well as share with your staff um, to support them in implementing Seesaw. So this first resource is for you. It is our resources for administrators. Um, and uh, on this site, which you see listed here, you'll find tutorials on how to use the uh, admin dashboard, how to gather and analyze that data from the uh, admin dashboard. You'll also find a link to all of the technical steps for rostering, um, like we just went over in this session. You can access that from this site as well. So make sure that you check that out. Um, so we'll drop that link in the chat. We also have a resources for teachers site that you can share for with your teachers. Um, and on this page, you'll find a link to a number of free trainers. So if your teachers go ahead and here and hit that free training tab, they'll find a bunch of mini on demand training videos that cover um, a wide variety of topics, everything from getting started with Seesaw to beyond like folders and the blog and those things um, on this site teachers can also find resources on how to get started and how to integrate Seesaw into their instruction. And finally, the final resource I want to share with you is um, our um, Seesaw for Schools professional development page. On this page, you can um, access our ready to use PD kits. And the, the, these PD kits will help you in supporting your staff and um, implementing Seesaw. So we have professional development kits developed for um, the basics and getting started and beyond. On this site, you'll find, um, you'll find presentation slides, you'll find scripted slide notes um, to help you deliver that session and resources that accompany those slides. All right, finally, we are in the middle of our virtual conference, Seesaw Connect. So we are inviting every administrator and educator to join. It started last Monday um, and it runs through August 13th. Um, if you do RSVP, you have access to 30 uh, plus more than 30 uh, conference courses. So make sure you take advantage of that. Also one final thing for administrators, um, if you have not done so already, um, you can nominate educators to fast track to ambassadors. So this um, really guarantees successful implementation um, in Seesaw PD at your school. So we have a form for how to do that. So we will make sure that we drop that in the chat for you.
All right, we're gonna open it up for some additional questions and Mitchell and um, Taza, feel free to just unmute if you would prefer to answer those questions live. Sure, that might be a little easier. Yeah. Um, so really quickly looking at the chat, Carrie, your question is, is the order enable nightly sync, then sync all schools and then archive classes and then archive students? Um, I would first archive the classes and then students before syncing all of your schools, just because you don't want to archive the schools that you, or the classes that you just currently synced in. Great. Um, let's see, let's see. Other questions in the chat. Is there anyone who I've missed? Taylor, I see your question. Will connected parents be able to see it once you sync? Yes, that is correct. So once you sync, um, all of the changes, all of those students will go into those classes and anyone connected to those students will be able to see those classes. So it will be public. So I would recommend not syncing until you are generally ready for your parents to be able to see the uh, current rostering. So there was a question that just came in from Scott. If you synced all schools already, do we have to archive? Is there an issue with not doing so? If you have already synced, then you generally don't need to archive. The only reason that I might archive using one of the admin tools, which is the archive student accounts tool, uh, tool is just because that'll get rid of any students that might have been manually created last year. Um, so it'll just leave you with clever students. Um, Jenny, your question to clarify, the sync will automatically archive last year's synced classes, but do we have to manually archive students or will the sync clear out students who are no longer there? Um, the sync will clear out any students who are no longer attending your schools and are no longer being shared as long as they are clever accounts. Um, and that'll happen in a full sync. And just to um, clarify that um, a little bit more, any classes that were created outside of the sync, so manually, those will always have to be manually, uh, manually archived. So when you sync from the previous year, the sync will only replace the data from the last year from the auto rostering. Uh, so Taylor, your question last year, you had a problem with Clever duplicating your classes. Um, how do we prevent that? Uh, it would depend on whether or not you rostered with Clever mid-year. Um, you might wanna check your sharing rules. Um, if that is something you would like to write into for our support team, um, we might be able to open up discussion with you upon that, um, but it might have been something that's more unique to the way that your district was set up. Uh, John, your question, will the archive classes clear out only sent classes or manually classes or both? Um, so when you click the archive button, um, it's going to clear out any classes um, based on the date that you set for it. Um, it could be clever created classes or class link created classes or manually created classes, but any class that has its data being shared, um, it'll just become unarchived through the nightly sync. Um, now, I would recommend that if you have a um, that you might want to do the archiving classes before pushing the sync button that might help. Uh, 
Um, let's see, Lisa, is there a reason why we would not want to manually archive all classes and students prior to resuming our sync? Um, unless there's any reason that your school would want to maintain any of the manually created students and classes, then I don't see a reason why you might want to hold off on that step. Um, but if you would like and you feel more comfortable with just letting the auto rostering do its thing, um, then you can choose to skip that step if you need it. And also with the auto rostering, um, let's say that you have a teacher that um, have been using Seesaw, but they are now in your sys. Uh, once you bring them over, um, it's going to bring in their, ma their manually created classes with their account. So that's why we like to suggest archiving after the sync um, to get those few classes that came over with the new teachers. Uh, Mohammed, your question, uh, how do admin know if any teacher manually created a class so that they can archive it? Um, if you check on the classes that um, are under the class tab, um, or you know, a better way to do it might be to go to the teachers tab and click on a teacher um, and look through any classes that they are currently a part of. Um, when you click on a class, you can click on the wrench icon to get to the class settings. And from there, you'll be able to see if it has a Clever ID or a class link ID. And if it does have any of those, then it will be a uh, auto rostered class. If it doesn't, then it is most likely a manually created class. Uh, Mark, your question, if we are changing our accounts from pre-K to fifth, down to K to third, will our pre-K, fourth, and fifth teachers lose their work if we didn't archive them first before updating the sync and grade level assignments? Uh, no, they won't lose their work. Um, just in case it does become relevant, um, if a teacher is moved off a dashboard from say, uh, being a paid account from like a Clever or ClassLink school dashboard um, and just move to a free Seesaw account just because you might be limiting uh, how many uh, grade levels are accessing Seesaw. When they are moved to free Seesaw, they will retain all of the activities that they have created, even if it exceeds the number that a free Seesaw teacher can obtain. Um, what will happen is that they will have all of them in their library, but they won't be able to create new activities until they are below the free Seesaw number, which I believe is 100. Uh, Lindsay, your question. The sync settings that was showing towards the beginning, is that inside Clever ClassLink or the Seesaw Admin Console? Um, I believe everything that we presented today was from just Seesaw's console. Um, so that would be in the admin dashboard or the district dashboard. Is there a specific point? Uh, the what the manage were. roster sync dashboard, is that what you might be referring to? Lindsay, I'm going back in the slides. Are these the slides that you are, this dashboard that you're referring to here, manage roster sync, sync all schools, those options? You can just drop in the chat. Just wanna make sure that we are telling you correctly. Thank you. 
All right, so you're looking to find how to find the um, Sync All Schools button and the Roster Sync Dashboard. So this is an option that you will only be able to see if you are a district level admin. Um, you would log into your district admin account and you would go to your district dashboard and that's where you might see it. If you are only a school admin, then you might not be able to access and see this uh, screen. All right, so we'll just take the, a look and see if there are any final class questions before we log off. I believe that we covered it. Okay, one final question. Yes, you will receive a copy of the recording. There will be an automatic email sent to you in about 24 hours. All right, we wanna thank you so much for joining us today. Um, you will receive, as I mentioned, a copy of this recording, so you can review that. Um, along with the recording, um, you'll also receive the slides as well and um, your certificate of completion. So thank you everyone for joining um, us today. Um, I want to thank um, Taza and Mitchell for joining me as well, and best of luck with your new school year, everyone. Have a good one. Thank you for joining.